Let's have a conversation about heartbreak. The wake of a breakup. Whew. Welcome to the ride of your life. <laughs> Oy vey. We're gonna walk through some suggestions, perspectives, some really practical tools for navigating this raw, gutting experience that you're having. We're taking the glasses off. First, I wanna say that what you're going through, I've experienced Heartbreak has the potential to be a really transformational, poetic time. You are raw right now, in tune with the pulse of life. It may feel very isolating, but it has the potential to expand your ability to connect with yourself and connect with other people. Because although you're going through it alone, you feel like you're in your pain alone, this is such a universal human experience. You're not alone. Like This is a rite of passage with yourself. If you lean into this, if you embrace this time, you can come out of this stronger. This is the stuff people have been making art about, making music about, writing poetry about for centuries. What I have noticed in times when I've been in the depths of heartbreak is just how much more I can connect with lyrics, little lines of writing that someone wrote a hundred years ago. Recognizing that this is going to pass, the stage you're in right now is temporary. My first suggestion for you is really embrace it and luxuriate in it while you're here. I know it's not fun <laughs> at all, but your capacity to feel pain like this is your capacity to feel love. And love comes with risk. Love comes with the potential of pain. It's so worth it, but sometimes it hurts. So congratulations on caring about someone enough to be feeling how you're feeling now. A lot of people numb out to this shit. They cap their capacity for love because they're protecting themselves from this pain. Shit happens. It's not gonna last forever. The fact that you're feeling this now means that you are open. The level of pain you're feeling now is reflective of the, the depth of love that you experienced. That's the first piece. Embrace it, indulge in your hyper awareness and your hyper attuned ability to connect with art right now. Listen to music, read books, read poetry, and express yourself. The second, piece I want to bring in here is the reminder that no one person holds the key to the universe for you. It may feel like right now, oh my god, how could I ever find a love like that again? <sighs> how could I ever open myself up, feel for someone so strongly that I run the risk of feeling pain like this again? And that's where I'm saying, if you can allow yourself to be in this, move through this, and come out stronger, better, more attuned to life, you're actually expanding your capacity for love with someone else. And no one person holds the key to love for you. You experience love with and through someone, and you will again. There are so many people in this world. You hold the key to love for you, not this person. This other person is not the gatekeeper of love. You're going to be okay. In fact, you're gonna be better than okay. So with all of that in mind, let's get into some more tangible suggestions. I suggest that you give yourself a time frame to indulge. You decide for yourself what feels appropriate there. Give yourself an end date. It could be a, a month from now where you're going to set some boundaries with yourself around the rumination, the emoting. This is not to say that you're not going to continue to experience pain, have new insights, that's gonna be a non-linear process that quite frankly will take years. I've had insights about relationships for, from years ago down the line, but I suggest giving yourself a date for when you're gonna be like, okay, it's time to move on. It's time to pick up the pieces. It's time to focus on me. It's time to do the things that bring me joy. It's time to progress on projects. It's time to build out new memories that don't have anything to do with this person. 
you're gonna start to have kind of like a bumper car situation with your thoughts where the ruminating thoughts start to come up. You'll be like, nope, nope. You're gonna have some boundaries around going into territory where you're just kind of masochistically feeling sorry for yourself, feeding the pain and creating the suffering. If you wanna give yourself an hour a day to feel sorry for yourself, to feel the feelings, great. Do what you gotta do, but begin to play with some boundaries around how much you're talking about this, how many conversations you're having with your friends. Of course, there's gonna be an extent to which that's helpful, but you're gonna know when you're starting to cross into the territory of masochism. <laughs> My next suggestion is to begin creating changes, micro changes in your daily life, in your environment. Uh, rearranging your furniture, in the music that you're listening to, not listening to the same playlist on a loop that all have associations with this person and memories and all of these things. Like start bringing in some novel stimuli into your environment, into your daily life. Get some changes going. We want to start building out life experience, building out memories, creating memories outside of the context of the relationship that has just ended. And I also wanna say that you don't need to try to force yourself to stop loving this person. You can love someone and choose not to be with them. You can love someone and move on with your life. You're gonna have a lot easier of a time if you're not punishing yourself or making yourself wrong for continuing to have love for this person. The love's just there. There's infinite capacity in here. Let's move on. As we are creating and building out new memories outside of the context of this relationship, as we are inviting in some novelty in our environments and all of the little things around us that we have associations and memories with, as we're getting out into the world, even if sometimes we don't feel like it, we feel just gutted and kind of dead inside, like, Reach for joy. Do things that get you out of your head and into your body. Have some fun <laughs> if you can. Try something new. Connect with what makes you feel happy to be alive. My next suggestion is that you focus on projects and things that can bring you a sense of progress. Whether that's learning a new skill, writing something, lifting weights, learning to DJ, cooking new recipes, Whatever floats your boat, you're gonna feel that dopamine, you're gonna feel that sense of satisfaction and accomplishment if you can focus on things that provide a sense of progress. Now, speaking of dopamine, <laughs> I suggest that during this time, you're very mindful of your brain chemistry and working with your physiology. So that means laying off the boots, laying off the wheat, like not going to the coping mechanisms that are gonna actually deplete your reservoir of feel-good neurotransmitters and doing things that will increase those feel-good neurotransmitters. Cold showers, exercising, dressing up in a way that makes you feel good. Even if it feels kind of dumb and it's like it's not gonna work, you can do some research on, okay, what actually elicits these feel-good neurotransmitters and how can I just trust the science of it? Do the things. You definitely need to be exercising. Get in your body. As you begin to stabilize, feel more centered and more grounded, and you exit this post-breakup altered state, this is when it can start to be constructive to do some reflecting on what you can learn from the experience, what the relationship clarified for you, what you realized doesn't work for you, that you don't want. Extract all of this wisdom to take with you to be able to create something better in your next relationship. To get clear on your standards, to get clear on what it is you may need to work on. Because as I said, you have the opportunity to come out of this time stronger, more centered, more connected with yourself, with an increased connection to humanity, an increased capacity to love, and so much experience, so much wisdom to draw on to create a healthier, more fulfilling relationship. So to summarize, 
We're acknowledging the rawness of where you are. Giving ourselves some space to indulge in that, to be in that, to connect to the pulse of life, to connect to humanity, to connect to your own humanity, enjoy art, to make art, to ride this wave. We are remembering that although this feels so isolating, it's actually so universal. We're giving ourselves a time frame for this indulgence period, and then we're beginning to set some gentle boundaries with ourselves around pockets of time for feeling the things. We're strengthening our discernment of when we're being masochistic, perpetuating the misery. As we're setting these gentle boundaries with ourselves, we're starting to create some variety and some novelty and some change in our environments and all of the things around us that we have associations and memories with. How can you mix things up? Invite in some fresh energy. And how can you start creating memories outside of the context of the relationship? We're getting out to the world. We're having some fun. <laughs> We're getting out of our heads and into our bodies. We're exercising. We're leaning into the things that bring us joy. We are leaning into projects and skill building and just little things that can help us feel a sense of progress and accomplishment. We're being mindful of our brain chemistry, tapping into our physiology and all of the things that make us feel good and being really mindful about the unhelpful coping mechanisms that are actually tanking your mental health. You're gonna be okay. In fact, it's gonna be wonderful. I am feeling for you. I am sending you all the good vibes. If you got some value from this, gained some insights or even just felt some companionship from this video, please let me know in the comments. I love to hear it. I love to feel that my speaking into the void has landed and impacted humans in a positive way. Please let me know in the comments, subscribe to my channel, check out, I'm gonna link a personal essay that I wrote about navigating heartbreak below. And I'm in your corner, I believe in you. I will see you in the next video. One more thing, in moments where you're feeling really lucid about why you and this person needed to break up, record a voice memo for yourself to listen to in moments when you forget. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.